Now we come to the special test. So one of the important things is, is there a fluid in the knee joint? So in the fluid in the knee joint, we have three things, a visible fluid test, a palpable fluid test, and a ballotable patella sign. So in visible fluid test, we will try to empty everything in from the medial side and see is there a refilling on pressing on the lateral side. So this is a medial side. Now sir is pressing on the medial side for the ease I'm flexing it a little bit. Sir is pressing on the medial side is trying to empty everything on the lateral side. So because the medial side is very superficial you can see the swelling there. The fluid there is being pushed on the lateral side and now sir will take away his hand and the moment he take away the hand if he sees the filling here that is called as the the visible fluid. Now you have to understand this point here that knee joint has got negative pressure inside that is why these hollows are there around the patella. But if there's a fluid, if there's a fluid, there'll be filling in this area, right? So this is the first thing. On inspection, see that. On palpation, see the fluid and then do this fluid test. The second is you can do a fluctuation test on the upper and the lower end of patella. You can, uh, you can try to empty with both the hands on the top and the bottom. You can feel a fluctuation, a cross fluctuation, which can be there on the top and the bottom right which is palpable and then the third one the classical patellar tap if the fluid diffusion a little bit more right you can press from the top fill the fluid why is he pressing from the top because the knee joint goes till the synovial reflections and he's trying to push it down all the fluid at the same point beneath the pet line press it and you will feel if there's a lot of fluid you will feel that this is called as a ballotable patella or the patellar tap now we have a look at the varus or a valgus instability. So varus and valgus instability are for the entire limb. He has kept one limb behind the knee joint. With the second limb he is holding the leg. And now he will start doing varus and valgus instability in 0 degrees. First he is doing in 0 degrees. And if you have, when you do varus instability, you are trying to push the leg inside and it means it means that the lateral complex is gone and in zero degrees the posterior collateral ligament is also accompanied with damage and when he will do a valgus test the medial collateral ligament one of the commonest ligament to get damage in the knee joint is damaged along with posterior crucial ligament in zero degrees flexion now further he can do it in 30 degrees flexion of the knee joint where he is only testing for the collateral ligaments for the valgus or a varus instability always comment on this when you're looking at the knee joint now the third is the anterior laxity. One of the commonest ligament which undergoes reconstruction in human body is anterior cruciate ligament. For that you have anterior draw test in which patient's knee is flexed to 90 degrees. The examiner supports the foot to prevent any malrotation by his own weight. He keeps his both the thumbs along the joint line. He first confirms that the antibial tuberosity has a step of about one centimeter anterior to the patella. This is the anterior, this is the anterior step which is there about one centimeter. If not, try to neutralize it. It means the posterior sag. Always before doing this test, see that there is no posterior sag. And now sir will try to give a drawer. He will try to pull the anterior drawer and now I'll request him to take away one hand. So you can see there is always there is always some laxity by which it can be seen. So sir can do it again, yes. So you can see there is some laxity by which it is there. And you know this anterior draw test is, is requiring 90 degrees of flexion. So for that now sir will do a test for acute injuries. He is going to do in 20 degrees of flexion. He will do the same. He will hold the lower end of femur and upper end of tibia and he will try to see the same laxity. Normally there is some laxity. You can see that there is some laxity in a normal joint. Keep trying it on your friends. Don't be so harsh, but please do that. You will have a feeling that is, there is some laxity which sir has demonstrated. And now sir will do the most. This is one of the most sensitive tests for, uh, for ACL injury. But now let's do the most specific test for ACL injury, the pivot shift test. In pivot shift test, sir is going to give a valgus rotation on valgus thrust on the knee internal rotation of the leg and now he is flexing the knee joint 
and if there is an anterolateral corner instability where ACL is also a part that will come out. So that is how the pivot shift test is tested out. Internal rotation, valgus and flexion from the extended position and now sir will show you loss of extension test in which he is going to support the knee joint, stabilize the femur and perform an extension, perform an extension and look at this area, you will see that there is some lifting up of the heel. But if there is ACL injury, this complete extension will not be possible because that comes up in between the complete terminal extension called as the loss of extension test. And then you have anterior rotation draw test in which you are actually testing in different positions of rotation of the foot that how the laxity changes. So in internal rotation, if there is some laxity, right? If there's internal rotation, there is some laxity, right? So when you, when you do an external rotation, that laxity will increase. So laxity increases on external rotation. In internal rotation, there's a locking which prevents it, right? On the anterior torque. 